Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to That's Fire with JD, your host, your new favorite podcast, your favorite music, music festival, and other dope shit type of podcast. Um, we're back, episode 25. It is the first week of March. We're getting uh, dumb, dumb lit. Spring's right around the corner. Yes, I just said dumb, dumb lit. That's how dumb. Dumb times two. Dumb 2X. Um, I got the different background. I'm recording this at a certain part of the day where the light wasn't good over here. So I opened up this window blind. And, uh, you know, this is just what I do for the people. This is what I do for the, like, bots that watch this podcast. Um, but you know what? The What matters is that we're building towards something. I believe it. And if you're watching this, you believe it too. Okay. So there wasn't a whole lot of news this week. To be honest, I don't know what the fuck I'm really going to talk about, but I just decided to fire up the cam and go like the first couple episodes, you know, and um, just see what happens. Um, So that's, I mean, I don't, I have like three things written down. I have uh, Snoop Dogg recalls about how the Queen of England stopped him from getting kicked out of the UK. Pretty hilarious uh, video. Um, Diplo posts more about Jack U. Rufus to Soul announced his show at the Gorge Amphitheater. Again, I don't know what else I could say about that other than that's hype. Um, you know, side piece. I'm going to the side piece show tomorrow. So I was going to talk about side piece. That's exciting. Um, and then also I want to start a new seg. I want to start getting segments in here, you know, have something for the people to look forward to. Um, kind of like a weekly, you know, just to get a routine in, get, get you know, like sports center has the top 10, you know, other shows have segments. Um, this show needs a segment. So the first segment will be what's fire. That's fire. Play on that's fire. That's fire. But instead of like, oh shit, that song is fire. That's fire. It's going to be like fire festival. Like the name of the show. That's fire. Like that's not fire. It's fire. It's not fire. It's fire. So what's fire. That's fire. But what's fire this week. Um, we've got motherfucking Chief Keef. He's doing a fire festival type thing. He uh, posted on Instagram a picture of him laying down, and I believe he's holding a gun. And uh, again, this is about a week removed from the beginning of Russia invading the Ukraine. This is not a geopolitical podcast, although my major at ASU was business and global politics. I will not be, you know, talking too much about that. I'm going to let the people over at wherever you get your news talk about that. Um, hopefully it's a reliable source. But um, Chief Keefe posted a picture of him, like a giant version of him laying down um, on a city, holding a gat, I'm pretty sure. And he just said, Ukraine, I'm on the way. <laughs> And now, um, the the day or a couple days after, you know, it was announced that Russia was invading Ukraine, which is major news, you know, U.S. might get involved if it escalates this, that, and the other thing. There's been a lot has developed over the last week, but initially, anyone that posted anything about a concert video, a fucking gambling pick a stupid tweet got absolutely ridiculed and torn their asses torn up their asses got eaten up because um it was insensitive to the geopolitical matter it was this that and the other thing and i think there is a time period where that is correct like i think last thursday night i was up real late and um i was awake when like the invasion actually started and i thought you know Maybe while the invasion is being announced, posting about fucking whatever, retweeting a, a 
picture of a girl's in her in her fucking bikini or something that might be a little distasteful but there's only like a couple hours probably and the rest of the week you know we can we can go about however we want that's my take on it you know i don't think everyone should pause everything that they're doing in their entire lives because of this you know be sensitive this other thing i don't you know whatever but um like the the ironic thing about it is like people were like yo uh like you should really like with your platform you should be really not to me but to fucking other twitter celebrities or whatever you want to call them hey you should really be showing light to the situation in ukraine instead of promoting your shit your podcast or whatever and it's like oh really i should be showing uh light and showing people what's happening concerning the most popular and worldwide topic that everyone already knows about i should be showing light to the topic that everyone already knows about um the people are just stupid i think that's what it comes down to but chief keith was fire chief keith is fire for this ukraine shit i'll post uh i'll put it right here um but god damn that shit was so funny to me i thought that was hilarious and i you know chief keith and no one in the comments was talking shit on chief keith you know if they want to go after these podcasters these fucking comedians whatever go, go into chief keith's shit and honestly chief keith if Chief Keefe was in the army and got sent over to fight some Russians, bro, I would be totally okay sending him and some of his like Chicago homies um, out there to get their own battalion going. I would join that battalion, truthfully. I would join Chief Keefe in, in a war um, led by our fearless leader, Sosa, uh, Chief Keefe 3 Hano. Huh? uh we love sosa we love sosa in this household in my household we love chief keith that's that's period point blank when i saw that picture too i uh i did like a little workout and i listened to chief keith for it and oh my god i've never been so hyped i'm like i'm all in on chief keith i changed my twitter header recently to like the nah meme you know like in uh i don't like you know, him and his boys jumping around with the shirts off and he's like Nah, I, I uh, stretched it out and made it my Twitter hit header. So I'm all in on Chief Keef, bro. I'm all in on Chief Keef because my Twitter handle is JD Scrib Nah with the H instead of the ER, AH instead of the ER. And, uh, you know, just a little shout out to my boy Chief. So it's only right that I, um, because I'm already doing that, tying myself to him on the socials, it's only right that if he ends up going to Ukraine, I go too. So I'm in that bitch. I am in that bitch most certainly. So um, was fire Chief Keith? That's fire. That's fucking fire, dog. That he's that he's on the way to Ukraine. Um, count me in. I bet his like battalion or his group, well, they they'd probably be foot soldiers more than anything. I don't think they would be flying jets or, you know, uh, parachuting in. Maybe parachuting in. That would be fire. But um, I assume that his little section would be the most lit the most lit like no rules fuck everyone but still go out there and like put up numbers you know um i also just don't know what to believe and what don't believe with some of that stuff like it, the ghost of kiev the ghost of kiev kiev um the guy who shot down six russian planes in one day that it ended up being fake it's like People like, I think that's called an ace when you take down like five or more. I saw that in the military. And like, if you took down five or more in your entire career in the military, that was called an ace. And they were saying this dude did it in one day and like very rare, but almost impossible. So I think that was, that was fake. But um, from what I know, I don't know, Russia kind of has been going in today, I think, but you know what, again, not a geopolitical podcast, business and global politics, um, but I'm not going to comment on that about that too much on here. Um, what I, what that uh, major did give me, though, was a chance to go live in Spain for nine months, so that was lit. Um, but yeah, was fire, Chief Keith, that's my dog. Um, anyway, side piece, deep dive I have. So this tomorrow... Friday, 
I'm going to the side piece show in Brooklyn, the kiss and tell tour. Kyle Kinch is opening among, uh, among others. Um, and it is going to be absolutely lit, but I wanted to do a little bit of research and I wish like, I'm going to try to clip this up and tweet it out at them and get some attention of those folks. Because again, I do these interviews. I'm like, I'm looking for interviews of them to find some info and nothing that I really want to know is on there. It's all the same questions. It's all the same bullshit, which is one of the biggest reasons I am, you know, coming out here and starting this podcast because I want to know more about these people than the information that I am given. So it's sold out too. It's, it's going to be at the, it's going to be at the Avant Gardener. I believe it's going to be at the tent, but uh, it's going to be dumb lit. So I've been loving it. They, they put out a fucking mix yesterday on thousand and one track list. I don't know how you say that one zero zero one track list and um, about an hour long mix, like 20 or so songs lit as fuck. I I'm expecting it to be extremely fun, extremely fun. I'm going to, I'll probably end up drinking a lot. I was going to say, I'm going to try not to drink a lot, but I'm going to drink a lot. Um, Ash Wednesday was yesterday and I, I didn't, I don't know what I'm giving up yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to do some fasting. I only bring that up. Cause I was like one year I gave up alcohol for that shit. And, um, it was actually pretty easy. It wasn't that hard. Once I was committed, this was also when I moved from Arizona to Texas and I was living with some fam and like, I didn't have too many outside friends initially. So it was easy, but what also happened during that period of time was motherfucking um, COVID. The COVID hit and I did the beginning of like that quarantine, like sober, not drinking. And I know like a lot of my friends and just everyone in general was like fucked up, getting fucked up that whole time. Um, so that'll be interesting. But what was I going to say? Yeah, I'm, I don't know what I'm giving up yet. Uh, I, I participate in that. My, my, I grew up Catholic, did all the like first communion and all that stuff. I don't really practice it a lot now. And I think even after a while, like middle school, high school, we, di we didn't really go to church that much. We would just go on like Ash Wednesday, Easter, maybe Christmas, but most of the time, not even Christmas, actually. So it was just for this holiday. But I like the idea of like spending 40 something days, 46, I believe, days, uh, you know, not doing much or, or giving up something. And I think for me, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm giving up yet. I might just do like candy and try to eat like healthy snacks, like nuts and fruit. I think I just decided that I'm going to do that because I'm doing it on the podcast. I think that's what I'm doing. No candy, maybe chocolate, but no candy, just like healthy snacks. There, there it is. I'm committing. I'm committing to that healthy snacks. Um, no candy and shit like that. So that'll be exciting. Um, I will be drinking. And I'm going to fast. I'm going to do like intermittent fasting. So I'm going to eat from 12 to 8, but not eat from 8 to 12. So I've done that before. I think I did that last year. What did I do? Last year, I, uh, I, I didn't eat out. Last year, I cooked everything. I was also up in Syracuse, like mad isolated on some like Walden shit and uh, didn't eat it all. Or like didn't hang out with too many people. I was just like on some super loner shit, but it was nice. But um, that reminds me last weekend, I met this girl and we were, I was telling her about Syracuse and she said like Walden. And I was like, yeah, Henry David Thoreau. And it was a very, it was a moment that made me feel extremely smart. And like, I know what I'm talking about. And like, I read books when that is a thousand percent, not the case. Like that was a book I read in high school that I just really liked. And it was one of the only books I read in high school that, and then uh, Catcher in the Rye, maybe the only two books I've ever read. Oh, I also read one by John Patterson about animals getting loose out of the zoo and uh, going crazy. 
taking over the world basically but um it made me sound extremely smart when I don't read or anything so I had to kind of put on that persona for like I had to pretend that like I was like a big reader and shit and because I didn't want to not I didn't want to be like I don't know I just got caught up in it talking about Henry but I just knew Henry David Thoreau live the life you have imagined um what's the quote fuck see this is me I don't know I don't know Henry David Thoreau live the life you imagined oh it says go confidently in the direction of your dreams live the life you've imagined as you simplify your life the laws and the universe will be simpler i don't know i didn't know the last part but i knew that go confidently in the direction of your dreams live the life you've imagined i actually fucking used that as a caption once when i was like backpacking through costa rica like right after high school I used that as a caption and it went off, bro. Went off. A couple, again, I think there was a girl who went in there and commented uh, HDT. And I was like, yep, I read books. I fucking read books. So <laughs> there is that. Um, but yeah, so Lent, whatever, drinking side piece. That's where I was, side piece. So the deep dive, the, deep, the deepest I could do um, on the side piece. So now I'm going to try to clip this up and see if they see it but i'm going to the side piece show tomorrow and uh i love you guys and hopefully I will, hopefully one day i'll have those motherfuckers on the pod so we can talk about this shit break it down uh you know ask them what they drink you know if they're doing drugs up there you know just get into the nitty-gritty if you will so oh that was corny i didn't like that i did not like that um if I had a producer, I'd be like, cut, cut that, scratch that. But uh, I am the producer. So um, nitty gritty, half a side piece. I, I also, I didn't know, I thought a lot of people were more into this shit than, I, than, than there are. And I think there's a lot of the community who are just like, I'm not going to say stupid, but maybe not as invested in just like the music for what it is, which is, which is cool too. But I feel like you got to know a little bit about these DJs. Again, another reason. I'm just like selling this podcast to whoever the fuck is listening, basically, you know, just fucking pow, pow, pow. And, um, but anyways, I saw Jester is another DJ who I've actually seen DJ live. I didn't even know it was him. It was at a Brownies and Lemonade, like after show. They, you know, they bring out, I don't know if you know, if you're listening, they bring out like, they'll do these like after parties or random parties and like, they won't even tell you who the fuck's coming, but it's always like fire people. But, um, Jester also does these like man on the street videos at music festivals, something that I want to do too. I just need a cameraman and a little more money saved up. I'm thinking I'm going to plan out one over the summer and kind of hopefully like go crazy, post them on the that's fire socials and whatnot. But, um, he was doing one of these videos interviewing people and excuse me he um was asking people if they knew who was in side piece and like no one fucking knew like literally maybe one person knew so i was taken aback but um side piece is nick nitty gritty and party favor their like side project that they're doing together and it's a house project neither of them do house nitty gritty does more of the harder like bass shit and party pa party favor does a little more like trap themed stuff he kind of goes around but he's worked with a bunch of rappers and um has a lot of hip-hop uh in his in his uh bag if you will but um it's party favor and nitty gritty side project i was reading in an interview they both like liked house music but didn't really um know how they wanted to present it or if they even wanted to do it and they had like on a facetime we're talking about this side project that they wanted to do um they showed each other some like tech house songs they knew they wanted to get into tech house and um basically like on the same facetime call like one of them said side piece should we just call this side piece and and uh it's a fucking perfect name honestly it's a perfect name it's it fits like the house um house music vibe i feel like side piece is like nothing too serious nothing too deep 
but you know, sexy and fucks. It's your side piece. And it's similar to like house music. I feel like I was, I've had this thought the other day, like a house music album. I don't know how that would go over because I associate house music with like, not background music, but like, you know, easy listening, like, and a lot of house artists have this approach where they just drop single, single, remix, single, single, and then it just keeps going. Like, I don't know what like a house album, how that would be received. Although Sonny Federa did one, but it was kind of, it covered a lot of different genres. So house music just to me as like, you know, perfect daytime party vibe, beach vibe, this, that, and the other. But like, I consider like albums and maybe it has a lot to do with like the way albums are perceived now. Like albums aren't really popular now. It's all about the single, all about getting playlisted and whatnot, but albums, I just don't associate the genre of house music with albums. I associate more like, I don't know, hip hop, R and B, um, or like, you know, Dessa or like Flume can make an album and it can feel like a project, like having a house project, like 15 songs. I don't know. And I don't know. I need someone to, I need side piece to come tell me if I'm feeling good or not. So what's up boys. But um, yeah, this is their side piece, uh, their side project. I mean, and uh, yeah, so Nitty Gritty's real name is Ricky Mears. He grew up in Haiti to Christian parents and was raised like super Christian and like buttoned up and would like download shit off of like LimeWire and stuff to get like the bad music. It was like top 40 stuff, but he wasn't allowed to listen to a lot of like top 40 or like a lot of music. Um, he, he already had On My Mind with Diplo written before the project had even happened. So they both came into this uh this project with a song and nitty gritty had already made on my mind and i'm sure they tweaked it up a bit once they got uh party favor in but uh i thought that was a fun fact he already had on my mind made up and uh i want to be a part of one of those like writing like camps i guess that diplo does not even to make music maybe I'll, maybe i have some ideas you know i think i could maybe put some good input in but i don't make music but just to like witness it you know just sit around with the camera and be like hey just watch the magic happen essentially um but nitty gritty last thing i have is his girlfriend was an nfl cheerleader i don't bonk me bonk me i consider myself bonked but um again i want to know more about these guys so come on the pod but um Dylan Ragland is party favor. That's his name. Um, he's worked with Gucci Mane, Rich the Kid. He's hat. He's married, so no bonking me there. Um, congratulations! I'm pretty sure he recently got married too. So fucking congratulations to him. That's hype. Um, and also, no, don't mean any dis- disrespect to my boy Ricky. Uh, I just think it's funny if I'm sitting here alone talking about how he has an NFL cheerleader girlfriend. I'm going to bonk myself, even though I wasn't intending to be that way. So I'm not going to dig myself into any more of a hole here. So I'll move on. Um, he has had his music and TV shows like How to Be Single, Vacation, Neighbors 2, NCIS Los Angeles, worked with fucking... Um, Mountain Dew in some commercials like he's got a lot of commercial work I want to know who his like team is getting it done but he went to uh Chapman I believe I read that this little school in uh California LA how he got integrated into LA and the music stuff and uh was in like the films he was studying like film and stuff so he originally wanted to like score films and whatnot and then eventually dove into this dj stuff which is exciting but um they've both played edc like side pieces performed at edc orlando and vegas red rocks the gorge sun bar tempe my stomping grounds i i was a fucking bar back at sun bar when they first opened um it's crazy to see now that they get all these artists but um yeah that's basically it for that um so side piece i'm going to see y'all um i have no doubt that it'll be sick 
I just don't know. Let me like, where is it, bro? Like, is it in the tent? And what is the tent? Is it like which part of the Brooklyn Mirage is it in? Um, the tent at Avon Gardner, which I believe is just the outdoor space covered up. This is this has been a this has been a question that I have been wanting to get answered forever i thought i was gonna go there actually um i thought i was gonna go there for uh fucking a couple weekends ago but i guess not i believe the tent is the outdoor space covered up so there's that and I'll tell you guys next week how it went. But um, moving on. Rufus Dussel. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this Snoop Dogg interview. So in an interview with DJ Wu Kid, Snoop Dogg spoke this week about the time he was almost deported from the UK before the Queen stepped in to help. The incident allegedly happened in 1993 as the rapper was going through a court case for second degree murder charges. As the rapper was going, um, Snoop Dogg recounted the front cover of a UK newspaper published in 94, shortly after he set out on tour, reading, kick this evil bastard out. That's what the news, u- newspapers in the UK were saying, calling Snoop Dogg an evil bastard. I bet those same motherfuckers or their kids are like loving Snoop Dogg online or follow him on Instagram or fucking some other shit. The irony, man. The irony. The balls on that guy, huh? The balls on that guy. Um, but it's a headline. The shit is documented. He said they had a picture of me on the front. It was like, take hey, the seal faster out. This is while I was fighting a murder case over there in the UK doing shows. The rapper spoke in reference to charges he faced after a man was shot and killed in Los Angeles. Snoop and his bodyguard were subsequently arrested, although the case was later thrown out in 96. He said, but guess who came to my defense? Just take a guess. He asked DJ Wu Kid. Also DJ Wu Kid, that's a sick name. Um, the queen, the queen said, this man has done nothing in our country. He can come. He said, the queen bow down. The queen, when the queen speaks, bow down. That's Harry and William's grandmother, you dig? They, <laughs> you think they, were, they weren't there saying, grandma, please let him in. Grandma, he's okay. We love his music. See, exactly. The... Uh, the queen, so the queen's kids or like grandkids were saying the queen's grandkids were fans of Snoop Dogg. That was an element of it. <laughs> and so the queen was like, yo, let, let them in, man. Um, but fuck, man, the 90s seemed crazy. Um, moving along, Diplo says, pray for more Jack U after it was the seven year anniversary of their album. For Jack U. I'm all for it, bro. I hope Skrillex is doing good because he had that Instagram post about how he was kind of struggling with some health stuff. Um, I believe like mental health and um, he's a G, but I think he and Dip, I think he would be down. Diplo's obviously down for whatever. Diplo like works like all the, like 24 seven, it feels like, even though it, there's pictures of him fucking around all the time. I think he still works a lot. Well, I know he does because he's fucking Diplo, but um, I'm all for that, man. Get Biebs on the track. I'm sure now they can. Uh... Oh, yeah, Diplo's album comes out tomorrow. That's fucking hype. Or tonight, I guess, but that's hype. So we're going to, I'm going to be listening to that shit for sure. Um, but I guess now that he's done with the album, what I was going to say is that he can now uh, fucking work on some Jack U shit. Maybe get those vocalists he's got. He got on his album um, onto the Jackie stuff. Um, and yeah, dude, I think that's it for me today. This is going to be a little short, but thank you for listening. Um, there, That's Fire, episode 25. Looking alive and well. Um, I appreciate you. Make sure to like and subscribe. Got some bars on me. Um, like and subscribe and send this to one of your best friends and tell them you love them. And um, if no one tells you they love you back, I love you.
But thank you for listening. That's fire episode 25.